Life in the 41st millennium can be short and brutal. Nowhere is that more apparent than in the Astra Militarum, or Imperial Guard, to us old-timers. But for all the vaunted technology and power, they are still human and frail and easily manipulated. Gene Steeler Cults, Astra Militarum, this is 40k in 40 minutes, Ascension Day! Greetings 40k fans, your host JT The Voice here, and have we ever got a treat for you? Veteran of the channel, Tanya the War Mistress, just square off against top tier tournament player and Art of War coach, Alexander McDougall. I'm Alex McDougall with Art of War, and I'm here to go up against longtime friend and sometimes podcast co host, Tanya. Alex's list consists of an Abominant, an Acolyte Icon Ward with Prowling Adjutant, a Nexos, a Patriarch, a Primus, and a Reductus Saboteur. He's got a squad of Acolyte Hybrids, three squads of Neophyte Hybrids, a squad of Aberrants, an Achilles Ridge Runner, two squads of Adeline Jackals, and a Goliath Rock Rider. He's also got some pure strain Gene Sealers to round out his Gene Sealer forces. But this would not be a rebellion without some allied units. He's got a Cadian Castellan, some Cadian Shock Troops, and two Chimeras with a Cyclops Demolition Vehicle. I'm going to use every trick I can to slow her down and move block and tag things. And if I can gum up the works, and keep her pinned in certain areas, I think I can take the win. Now, Alex is an Art of War coach, and he knows the game very well, and I am not any of those things, but he's also one of my favorite people on the planet to play, so I know we're gonna have a great time. I absolutely love her list because she's got Gaunt's ghosts in it. They are led by Lord Solar Leontis and a platoon command squad. She's also got a tank commander with Grand Strategist and Ursula Creed herself. Three infantry squads round out most of her troops. She's got a Chimera, two Basilisks, a big squad of Bulgren, a Hellhound, a Lehman Rust Demolisher, a Manticore, some Scout Sentinels, Tempestus Scions, and also a Cyclops Demolition Vehicle. Astra Militarum also have a reinforcement stratagem, so she too can bring back units. This could be a long one, folks. I just love this idea of everyday normal humans fighting against the absolute horror of everything that's out there in the grim dark universe and yet sometimes they are successful so hopefully today is going to be one of those times where i will be successful against the xeno scum of the gene stealer cult today's mission is dawn of war classic long edge deployment on the full table length we're also playing Hidden Supplies. There's gonna be an extra objective in the mid table and we're playing Scorched Earth. So destroying objectives for points is a thing. My list is going to be running fixed. So I'm gonna be doing deploy teleport homers in the middle and eventually develop, deploy teleport homers on the back line. And I'm gonna kill all those tanks and get all the points I can. And if I can't kill the tanks, I'm dead anyway. Teddy has chosen tactical secondaries for this game. So it should be interesting. She's gonna have to change what she's doing every turn based on what the draws are, and those draws can be great or they can be bad. Could be the difference in this game. Might be a bit of an uphill battle for me going against Alex because he is a very formidable player. He was my coach as well. I probably am gonna have to start burning those objectives pretty quick because I just don't have the staying power that she does. So I'm gonna get on them, burn them, and run away. Uh, you know, kind of Eldar style, you cowards. Looks like Alex has decided to put the Acolyte 10 man squad with the Primus and Nexus in Deep Strike Reserve. His 20 mans with the Neophytes and the Icon Ward are also in reserve. And two 10 man squads of Neophytes are, you guessed it, also in reserve. He's put his Aberrants inside the Rock Grinder. The Cadians are inside the Chimera. And a Chimera Truck Duckin. That's right, the Cyclops Demolition Vehicle is inside the other Chimera. It's like a 40k Inception. Tenny's got both Scion units deep striking, and the infantry with Ursula Creed attached are inside a Chimera. My damage is spread out over the army quite a bit. Uh, my biggest swing is with the Acolytes, with the bombs. I've got the full package on them, I've got the characters, they're gonna get strat support, I've got a free strat. That's gonna come in and try and go for the Haymaker on some kind of valuable target. If I can take that down, buy myself a bit of time, then the rest of the army can maybe play cleanup. Um, I gotta watch out for her being able to reduce damage. Reduced damage really hurts against Gene Stealer Cult, and I also have to watch out for really good overwatches. That unit is only 10 models. That Hellhound can probably kill the entire unit on Overwatch. So I really have to be careful about where they are.
And then I've got one more drop and then I'm done. Wow, I have a lot of drops yep. left. Yep, yeah. Yep. I know that he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. He has a tremendous knowledge of the game. So in order for me to, to win this game, I absolutely need a little bit of luck on my side when it comes to the rolls. I really need to take my time and think about what I'm gonna do. And I really need to be aware of the acolytes that he has in Deep Strike because when they come in, I'm gonna lose whatever they are near. So I'm gonna try my best to try and screen those out, but a three inch Deep Strike is really difficult to screen out. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I think what we'll do, all of my stuff oh, off the no, board. Oh no, I never saw that coming. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this is, you, you can get that for 99.99 through artofwarcoaching.com. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing big on their scout moves, just some minor positioning concerns, but already both players are cooking in each other's kitchen. Looks like shenanigans abound already. Both players have redeploys and scout moves. Well, let's do a handshake first. Oh, we're doing the handshake first. Yeah, before the roll, before okay. we know, before All there's right. any salt involved have, on the handshake. Have a great game. You have a great game too. Yeah. You have a better game than me. Oh, well, I can't even come back to that. But, yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, that's how it works. Well, let's, gotcha. let's see if all that coaching that you gave me is going to pay off. <laughs> so if I win, I lose because I'm not a good coach. That's right. Great. I win. <laughs> Do you want first turn? I don't think it really matters to me either way. Alex looks to be going first. He gains a command point, so does Tanya. Here we go. This episode was brought to you by our friends at Art W. If you're passionate about the Warhammer universe and looking for the best professional miniature painters to bring your figures to life, look no further. Art W Studio is here to make your tabletop dreams come true. We at Play on Tabletop love to paint, but we often can't paint everything in time for our busy production schedule. So having Art W as a partner in these efforts has been fantastic. If you're like us and have a vision for what you want in the tabletop, but don't necessarily have the time to make it come true, consider Art W Studios. Their website allows you to get a quote through an online form, and you can peruse a gallery of their works to help get you inspired. We've got more coming from them in the future as well, so be sure to go check them out and help support them to support us. Now, back to the action. This first turn, I'm gonna take up as much room as I can. I'm gonna send forward just as much as I need to take the position I need and to do my action. Alex moves his Cyclops demolition vehicle up to deploy Homer's mid table. That is the best 25 points in any codex ever. I don't need to overextend. I don't need to go further than that. There's not a whole lot my opponent can do about it either. I just get to move where I need to go, do the thing and leave it at that. And we'll see what she does back to me. Alex has moved up as far as he dares here, I think. That poor, poor Sentinel may be in for it. Adelon Bikes doing their demolition run on that Sentinel and they managed three mortal wounds, not bad. Now we'll go to actual shooting. So we'll start with the incinerator off the bikes into the scout Sentinel. Shots. Four. So far so good, Sentinel's taking a couple wounds, down to two left. And then a mortar over the top to Solar Squad. Okay. Okay. Huh. Oh, they feel no pain. I'm gonna lose two. So we'll take a heavy bolter and we'll shoot it at the Manticore. Three up. Good. Okay, and then we'll go heavy bolter into that guard squad in the back. Off of this, here we go. Looks like that Xenos Chimera has killed a couple of guardsmen with its heavy bolters. I've already done more to that thing than I expected. Out of the Jackals, make the charge into the Sentinel. No damage from the Jackals into the Sentinel, and the Sentinel manages to damage a bike. It's a slap fight in the old town tonight. My turn went well enough. I was in position. I didn't do any damage. I didn't expect to do any damage. No bring it down yet for Alex at the end of his turn, but he does score three points for deploy homers. Both players still sit at a command point. Tanny's turn now, and Lord Solar Leontis gives out an extra command point. She's up to three. She's drawn engage on all fronts and cleanse. Not the easiest, but also not the hardest. Cleanse would have been better a little bit later in the game. This early on, I don't want to force any units out into the middle of the board just to get those cleanse points. Order phase now. Move, 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 Scout Sentinel. Move, move, move on Hellhound. Take aim on Basilisk. And then move, move, move on other Sentinel. Command squad that's attached to Lord Solar is going to tell this 
other infantry squad over on this side to move, 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 so that I can get up on that objective. You bet. So this guy's going to go real far. Yep. Uh, oh, to go as that a, far. Uh, you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Oh, Alex using the Reductive Saboteurs once per game, hidden bombs, and does six mortal wounds to that Sentinel as it gets close. It feels very much like Wily e. Coyote waiting for the Roadrunner. Give a boom! Tanya is using the infantry on her right flank to cleanse that objective in No Man's Land. Tanya really needs to be mindful of just how many Neophyte squads Alex has to come in. He also has that old three inch deep strike ability, so he can get awfully close and bring his hand flamers to bear. God's Ghost return into a nice little hiding spot. She really doesn't need them now, so their uppy downy doesn't matter as much as it will on turns three, four, and five. Let's see how many uh, Gene Stealer cult pilots you got in there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ouch! So, so if your dice roll bad, you can just blame me. <laughs> this is true. Sabotage. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with the Hellhound. Big Flamer will go in here. Mm -hmm. Little Flamer will go in here. You bet. Damn! Hellhound splits fire, only one dead gene stealer and one dead biker. Split fire to victory! <laughs> <laughs> so the Manticore is going to put a Storm Evil rocket into the gene stealers, and its heavy bolter is going to go into the jackals. The Manticore guns down the Adeline Jackal, but here come those Storm Eagle rockets. Uh oh. Now I should have spent the CP, but oh well. Five dead gene stealers. Tank man is putting fire to potential victory as well. So I'm gonna start with the hunter killer missile because shoot me, shoot me the face. 50-50 shot. That's right. Hits. Oh. I imagine threes. Yeah, yeah. No. That close Adeline Jackal squad has taken some minimal damage. <laughs> I'm gonna die anyway, so. <laughs> we'll do those multi meltas. Yep. Nope. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gene stealer pilots in there. <laughs> Heck yeah. But here comes the demolisher cannon. Dead. Oh wow, the two dead jackals, that's it. He he's, yeah, he could claim you. Yeah. He might as well, I'm like, gonna I'm die. I'm like just praying for the best. <laughs> yeah, um, and he's gonna die, so I'm also gonna put my hunter killer in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scout settle on a single wound, opening up on the Reductive Saboteur. Hunter killer misses, but the heavy flamer roasts are good. I'm gonna put my basilisk into gene stealers. <laughs> The non-ordered Basilisk fires into the g series and almost got them all. The Basilisk that has take aim is going to shoot at the red squad of Jackals because I'll get rerolls of one to hit and I will lose the indirect penalty okay. against them. Yeah. D6 plus three. Let's see. Didn't even need the orders. Down go that squad of Adeline Jackals. Joke's on you. hi -ya! They're back! <laughs> Alex will place a token where they are allowed to come in. That's it. <laughs> Is me. it over? It's over! See, this could have been turn one, and then I had to take it again before my deep strikes came in. So this is always why I'm like, eh, maybe first isn't so bad. Yeah. Charge phase, my Hellhound is gonna charge into those jackals on the objective over there. I would like to take shock. I am shocked. And that's gonna cost me one command point. One command point for four mortals? Not bad. So you're dead. And you're also down to one. Fight face now, Hellhound goes to town, and that is a dead quad. Only one jackal on the objective, but it manages to strip a wound off. I'm feeling really good at the end of my turn, but I know that Alex has other shenanigans up his sleeve, so you can never count out the Gene Sealer call. The damage came in. It's kind of what I saw coming. It hurts, but that's the life of a Gene Sealer cult player on turn one. My turn two coming up, I'm gonna hit back really hard. Solid first turn for Tanya. She's got a gauge at all fronts for five, cleanse for three. She's at eight three lead. However, that Hellhound is tied up in combat, which means its flamers cannot overwatch. It was a gutsy play to get the points, but I don't know if that was a great call. We'll find out on turn two. Well, it's turn two. That's the GSC go turn. Alex scores five points for primary. The Gene Stealer squad fails their battle shock and the lone biker passes. The Gene Stealers run less than normal. Thanks, Basilisk. Ruck Grinder moves up. Looks like some guardsmen may be in trouble. Chimera rolls up and decides to burn that objective. No shots for it this turn, but points are points. <gasps> oh, big brain. <laughs> 
Alex is Cyclops deploying homers mid-table again. Alex being extremely deliberate with his deep striking neophytes, making sure to zone out as much as possible as Tanya still has Tempest's Scions in deep strike as well. So we're gonna spend a CSP for this. I'm gonna show up at three inches. Okay. Oh boy, here come all the deep strikers. They came from below, they came from above, they came from everywhere. And 20 strong neophytes setting up a wall in the middle table. So we'll start here and see if we can get rid of the scout side. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the grenade launcher and see if we can do this with the minimum amount of dice. Four up. Dang it. We'll go to here and we'll shoot into this one. Okay. Chimera Melted Gun downs the Sentinel. There it goes. Two bring it down points for Alex. I will put the mortar mm -hmm. into the manticore okay. and I will put the heavy stubber off the ridge runner into here because I can. Okay. So, mortar into the manticore. Looking for a singular hit. I did it. Get targeted. Okay, what does this do? It's an extra AP oh, okay. on whatever shoots at gotcha. it. Stubber into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Two up. No. This was underwhelming. Let's see if I can do some nonsense back there. Oh, will, I'm sure you can. Yeah, this is, this is the sauce. This is gonna hurt. So we're gonna do two demo charges into the manticore. Okay. Two demo charges into the basilisk. Okay. And then all of the hand flamers into the big giant squad. Okay. Alex is using a perfect ambush for a command point on the mid-table squad, and the next host of the squad, that's in Tanya's deployment zone, gives its squad the same ability for free. One command point for all the bonuses. Such a deal. Demo charges into the manticore from the acolytes. I only save one. Okay, so that will be 14 damage. <laughs> <laughs> the basilisk goes down. Can the manticore survive? I just rolled so bad. It does. Okay. So I will still do six damage to you. There will be no saves because I gave you the AP token from okay. the Ridge Runner. And then the squad in behind. The guard squad lose six, however. So we're gonna yes. put all of the last gun fire into these guys. Okay. And then all of the good guns into those guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that squad goes down, but the Bulgren hold. Two command points on reinforcements, and that dead squad is gonna come back for Tanya. Okay. Uh, we'll then go for some charges. Yep. The Gene Steelers have reached the Hellhound. Rock Rider fails his charge. Alex, command rerolling, still fails. So we'll start with the Brood Lord. Okay. Four. Both good. Okay. And then the Gene Stealer. And no damage. Okay. God's Ghosts again sneak away. Okay, okay, I really expected that either my tank commander or two artillery pieces were gonna be dead at the end of all of that shooting. So that Manticore is gonna live. I haven't even bracketed it. Very disappointing. That is a dead Sentinel and a dead Basilisk. Five bring it down points and three for deploy homers mid table. Alex has jumped out to a 16 to eight lead. <laughs> Turn two for Tanya, and she's drawn Assassination and Defend Stronghold. Matagor is battle shock, but everything else is okay, and she's up to 18 to 16. Tank Commander is going to tell the Basilisk to take aim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lord Solar is going to tell the Tank Commander to take aim. Mm -hmm. He's also going to tell the Lehman Russ to take aim, and he's going to tell the Bulgrins to fix bayonets. And then the command squad is going to tell everybody here to um, first rank fire, second rank fire. I feel like this is very doable. Middle units moving here. Tanya really needs to maximize her output, and lethal hits are kind of good. That's the guard special rule is lethal hits if they do not move. Incoming reserve squad. Alex's Adeline Jackals are back on the board. So I am going to start over there because I don't have any choices, and I'm going to dump everything into the brood board. Patriarch. Patriarch. But it is a brood board. Two d six for the big cannon. You bet. You roll against the squad. So the first two on the Gene Stealer, uh, he doesn't want to live. Okay. And then the next two on the Patriarch, he's fine. Okay. Oh, then, oh 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 oh! I'm going to interject. Oh, the Gene Stealers are back. All right. We are Legion. <laughs> Next, I'm going to put the Manticore, everything into this squad. Mm -hmm. Command rolling number of shots for eight, down to two command points, and five dead neophytes. I'm going to put Lord Solar's squad, everybody, into this here. Mm -hmm. 
Lord Solar Squad and Bodyguard opening up on that same squad. Only four models left, including two of the characters. So I'm going to start off uh, with Gaunt's Ghosts, and I'm going to do Larkin's Long Laz first. Okay, so this one's going into the character that has four wounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do! No! Five. Oh, the squad is dead, and finally a character dies. That's Assassinate for five. But that squad's going to come back. Okay, so we're going to do that. Heavy Bolter is going to go into the character over here, mm -hmm. and then we'll shoot the Earthshaker Cannon into Neophytes. Yeah. The Earthshaker Cannon, which is mm -hmm. going to be D6 plus three plus four. Yep. <laughs> three. So now Heavy Bolter. Sure, he <laughs> failed. Okay. So he's got two left. Okay, so the tank commander is going to do some shooting. So the character in the back here is going to be shot with the heavy stubbers and the multi meltas. Okay. And then the demolisher cannon and las cannon are going to go into the rock grinder. You bet. Heavy stubber. Yep. Okay, this is probably already dead. It is. Okay. D6 plus three from the demolisher. I love Primus. They're so weird, but they're so good. Three. I will make one. <laughs> so nine damage. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes, let's go! Rock Grinder lives on a single wound! The Chimera's gonna try to take down the Rock Grinder. It lives with the Flamers, but the Last Gun Array takes it down. No wounds on the disembarking Aberrants, fortunately. The Demolisher Cannon, the Last Cannon, oh, the Hunter Killer Missile. Yep. And the Heavy Stubber are all gonna go into the Chimera that's doing the action. You bet. And then the Multi Meltas are gonna go into the Aberrants. Okay. Final tank opening up, and an Abbott only takes two. Okay, demolish your cannon. You D6 bet. plus three. Chimera takes five wounds only from the demolisher cannon. Last cannon. Ooh. Oh, no! And saves the last cannon. That's huge. Can the hunter killer do it? That's the last thing you've got. Hunter killer misses. Oh, no! That means that Chimera is going to be able to burn that objective on Alex's next turn. So I'm going to spend one command point on the Bulgrins for the grenade strat because I want to try and get that wound gone. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we can do. Bulgrin throwing grenades try to take down the single wound aberrant to make their multi-damage hits a little more effective. It would be a waste otherwise to put one of those hits into a single wound model. Oh, there you go. Four mortals, kills an aberrant, and manages to wound another. So moving into the charge phase, I have a charge to make. Bulgrin, charge the aberrants, they're in. So I'm gonna hit on threes. Mm -hmm. Nothing special going on here. Yeah. You got it. I'll make one. So that means I'll take 18 damage. He'll take one damage and die. Two on the next guy. Mm -hmm. And he'll, okay, okay, he'll just die. All right then. And then I'll take another two. I take nothing. Okay. Is he going to be the hero I need? He is. Yes. He is the hero but you need. But will he live? I gotta make both of these still. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. All right then. Holy four up. Feel no pains, Batman. That was crazy. And then we'll swing away. So we'll start with the littler boys because okay. they don't do as much damage. Okay. Albert's clap back and Tanny with the four up involves on the clap back. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. We have got a serious malfunction at the junction. So we'll go with the Patriarch into the vehicle. Broodlord does some serious damage to the Hellhound. Wow. Hellhound at two wounds, Patriarch at five. At the end of turn two, we've got to score Tanya 23, Alex 16. Well. I'm going into top of three. I took a pretty good amount of damage. I have been getting all my stuff back though. It doesn't feel like damage when you keep regenerating models. Start of Alex's command phase, he has burned an objective. That's gonna be an extra five primary at the end of the game. The neophytes gain Alex an extra command point. So he's up to three and Tanny's at two. 26, 23 for Alex. Tal Jackal's Demo on the auger and three mortal wounds. Ouch! I'm still zoning you out. Corrupted guardsmen pour from the wounded Chimera, taking the back of the board and making losing his home objective almost impossible. D6 
keep striking neophytes in to deploy teleport homers at the end of the movement phase, and three neophytes come back mid-board. I cannot have these units sticking around in my deployment zone because he's going to be maxing out on his secondaries. So that's a problem for next turn, I think, maybe. Okay, we are into the shooting phase now. We'll okay. attempt to finish this guy off. Live! So we'll start with four up. Yay! Ooh. Neophytes kill the single wound sentinel. That's two more points for Alex. Okay, we're gonna go to here. We'll go to there. Okay, so we'll start with the hunter killer because it'd be spectacular if it yeah. did something because I've never shot one before. Ooh, let's go. It hits. Oh. It wounds. Okay. I oh. need a six. These are the best. Nope. <laughs> Yes, that's um, the way it works. <laughs> no, it's not. We're gonna reroll the damage roll on that. Okay. Dang! Yay! And he still doesn't kill it. Second Chimera, same result. No joy. <laughs> that was a lot of shooting for two damage. <laughs> Welcome to guard. Yep. So the Ridge Runner is gonna shoot the Stubbers here at the uh, Bulgren. Mortar will go to Solar Squad in the back. Okay. Stubber into the Bulgrens from the Ridge Runner. And then we will wound once. Nice. Four up. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I will give them the AP token. And then the mortars over top into Solar Squad. Down goes Lord Solar's bodyguard. Tanya responds with reinforcements for two command points. They're coming back next turn. Is anything ever going to stay dead in this game? Well, let's see what the bikes can do. We'll shoot the jackals into these guys here. Bulgren are just tanking everything coming at them like crazy. So the neophytes are going to shoot. I'm going to do the seismic cannons into the Bulgren. Okay. I'm going to do the grenade launchers into the Chimera. Okay. Neophytes trying to split fire to victory for Alex now, and no real joy there at all. We're good. All good. Okay, I believe that might be the end of the shooting phase already. It was pretty underwhelming. Neophytes charge the Bulgren, and they're in. And then I'll start with him. Four up. Good. All good. Okay, and then 16, 17 more attacks. It's this guy's been punching you. Yeah, we're good. Okay, um, you can swing back on either side. Hellhound fails to hurt the Patriarch, but he certainly ends that Hellhound. They punch me back with your bow. Oh boy. <laughs> they just don't yeah. want to play today. You know, for hitting on twos. Unfortunately, I have left a hole in the back of my screen. I thought I had it all good to go, but she's got tiny little five man units. She's probably gonna be able to get something in there. We'll see if she pulls the right cards for it though. Really good turn for Alex. He's up to 10 bring it down and 10 deploy homers. He's got 35 points to Tanya's 26. Tanya's drawn deploy homers and behind enemy lines. So unfortunately she pulled the perfect cards. Literally me moving backwards like an inch stops it. But you know, that's the kind of mistakes you can make when you're playing a game that's this complex. For Maticor's Battleshock, so are the Bulgren. That's not good, as they probably want to fall back. Five points on primary, sees Tanya jump to 31, to Alex's 35. Yeah. I taught you that this is the best way to play the game. Be annoying. So I think I just, <laughs> I think I just <laughs> take the mortals. I agree. I think I think I just take the mortals. I, so here's the thing. With my list, I don't actually think I have the ability to kill him anymore. No. I think those two are just going to live the rest of the game. So taking a bit of damage now is like, eh. Yeah. I'm just going to take it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're just going to do that now. Even before I roll six damage. Yeah. Okay. So what does he do? He does D3. Okay. He does three. Okay. okay. Mm, All best right. outcome for me, I guess. Cool. Tanya is now on that objective. They would have probably lost in the fight phase anyway, but that squad can die to shooting, something the Astra Militarum does very, very well. Five Scions drop into the top right. They're gonna get behind enemy lines and deploy homers. She's brought five Scions closer to home to try to defend against those 10 neophytes scoring Alex points. So I'm gonna bring in my infantry squad that I paid two command points uh, last turn to mm -hmm. bring back. Gaunt's ghosts show up mid-board, try to kill those neophytes. Okay, at the end of your movement phase right. now, my blips are going to come back into the game. And then we get the bomb squad back, and they do get the bombs back. Yep, I'm gonna start with the Chimera into the squad here. You bet. <laughs> Threes. Sixes. Chimera opens up into the neophytes, kills five. Reinforcement squad fires into the same neophytes. Whoops. Oh, it looks like shooting at former friends and allies is taking their toll. 
Tanya's rolls are going sideways. Five plus. Oh, we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is not the outcome this I was expecting. Not... I was like, yeah, let's kill him. I don't care. So this squad of guardsmen mm -hmm. are going to shoot into the neophytes. You bet. It's plus one. Yeah, okay. Hey. Hit, hit. I think I think the indoctrination is taking hold. It's going pretty good right now. Armor save. Yeah, we're good. Oh, it looks like shooting at former friends and allies is taking their toll. Tanya's rolls are going sideways. Okay. I guess Gaunt's ghost has got to go in. Uh, this is insane. What? Let's say this goes really badly yeah. and I live this. Yeah. Even with that, you know what I said? I was like, if I live with one model, yeah. I will prevent everybody else from shooting at them. Right. Just to get dudes back and yeah. I'll try and take this back from you. Yeah. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Hits. Mm -hmm. Does not work. First last carbine yeah. without the AP. Without the AP. Doesn't yeah. matter. I didn't make yeah. it. I did make the field no pain though. Oh yeah, there is two. I'll just do another one. Yeah, but isn't one of them not AP but sustained? Probably, I don't care. One more. <laughs> one more. Oh, dang it. Yeah, one more dead. Now this one is with AP. Mm hmm. Good. Okay. <laughs> Bragg's auto cannon. Mm hmm. Uh, goes through. I almost did. Yeah. <laughs> Two dead now. Long last hits. Don't do it. No. I put so much so much into shooting that neophyte squad and uh yeah they're still they're still kicking it okay so i'm gonna put the manticore into this squad over here you bet yep it's minus two plus two manticore into the neophytes on her flank only one dies so this scion squad that just came in in my back line is going to try and dump everything that it can into these neophytes here. Hotshot Laz pistol. No. <laughs> Off to a good start. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to overcharge. No. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. You're just hoping to scare them away at this point. Melta? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thank goodness you're not shooting something in, like really valuable. I know. Now Hotshot Laz guns. Force. Yeah. Okay. I will make one and three will get blasted. Um, so the Basilisk is gonna shoot the Earthshaker cannon into these neophytes mm -hmm. to try and get them gone. Basilisk into those action monkey neophytes, only two dead, but that will force a battle shock test. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Leaving Russ splits fire. Can she kill the neophytes? The threes. So the two guys, armor saves, little pain. They do! Do they come back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I work so hard to kill these units and they just keep coming back. I guess now I know how other people feel when I do this to them. <laughs> okay, so yep. Demolisher Cannon is D6 plus three. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Aberrants go down, and finally, Alex fails a roll for Cult Ambush. That is the first one he has failed, and we are in turn three. Okay, so the tank commander is my last unit to shoot. So heavy stubbers are going to go into Icon Ward, and then the Demolisher Cannon and the Laz Cannon are going to go into the Unwounded Chimera. Okay. And then the Multi Melters are going to go into the Wounded Chimera. Gotcha, yes. So we're going into the Icon Ward. I do not. I will make none. Okay. Okay. Multi meltas. Threes. Yep. Oh. Demolisher cannon. Mm -hmm. Three. Thing. I'll make one. So two go through. For eight eight damage. damage. Okay. So that's two left. See if this last cannon can do some work here. Yep. Command reroll on reroll and hit that chimera fails down to a single command point. <laughs> okay. I'm going to see if this guy gets up. Okay. Yes. I am using a stratagem called Return of the Shadows to pick up two battle line units at the end of the opponent's turn and put them back into reserves. I feel freaking great. Alex is one of the best players in the world. I really admire him. He's coached me for a long time and been a great mentor. And anytime that I could keep the game close against him, I feel like I'm doing a good job. Chani's managed three points on behind enemy lines, five points on deploy homers. 
The score is 39-35 in favor of Tanya. Alex is turn four, he scores 10 points on primary, 45-39 in Alex's favor. His Adeline Jackal passes Battleshock, the Neophytes pass, but the Chimera fails. So you, you're a coward. <laughs> There's probably still a guardsman driving that around. No, no fanatics in there. <laughs> no extra limbs in there. <laughs> yeah. They just showed up on the wrong side of the battlefield. Okay, so yeah, we'll they are on the wrong side of the battlefield. <laughs> Here come the G-Stealers. Patriarch runs up as well. He's really trying to kill another tank. Can he do it? Acolytes come back in within three inches via tunnel crawlers for a single command point. He's down to two. The neophytes are back in on his left flank as well. At the end of the movement phase, they're gonna demolish and run them. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, three mortal wounds. We go to the shooting phase. Alex using a perfect ambush for a command point to increase his ballistic skill and armor penetration. Tanya responds using armored might to produce incoming damage on her Lehman Rust command tank. So we're gonna mortar over the top to here. Okay. I will hit once. That's all you need? It's all I need. <laughs> uh, no damage though. But that is the AP token. Now we will do the acolytes. Time to do the big boy. So we're gonna do one into the manticore. And if he doesn't kill it, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> and we're gonna do three into the lemon rust. Okay. All of the hand flamers are gonna go into your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one into the manticore. Rerolling ones, because you're still on the objective, right? You haven't yeah, moved? Yeah. Okay. No! <laughs> oh, that's the worst. So one wound at minus three. Six up? No. Okay, two damage. It's down to one. <laughs> no! Okay, and then the three into the Lehman Russ. Okay. Away we go. Down to three. Okay, I can do that in combat. Right, Patriarch? Right? <laughs> And then we'll do the hand flamers. One lives. Okay, we're gonna do this chimera into the manticore. Okay. Because something's gotta kill him. Okay. Good, good talk. <laughs> uh, multi laser. Okay. <laughs> Got some. Got some. Manticore goes down and it explodes. Oh, Does he blow? Yes. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, let's do the neophytes, see if I can't pick up the last scion. I didn't move for reasons. I'll miss everything anyway. Okay, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna right. do six wounds. Okay. If you take these three wounds off this Lehman Rust with a freaking Chimera, <laughs> I'm gonna be so sad. Look, we actually train our guys, you know? Oh! <laughs> this is the heavy bolter. Looking for sixes. Shut <laughs> up! Three. Well, one goes one. through. Uh, we'll go to, to the multi-laser. And wound once. Two up. Good. Continuing on. Adel and Jackal splitting fire, some dead guardsmen only. Neophytes into those deep scions, only two left. They can left. still be charged. Done, 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 done. Charging time. Woohoo! Patriarch charges the Lehman Russ, he's in. Abominant makes it into the Russ as well. The six wound Chimera also charges, he's in. Adel and Jackals have reached the guardsmen. Gene Seethers reach that lone bull grip. Neophytes fail to charge the scions. I'm gonna start with the Abominant, but I think it's fun if he can get the kill. Oh wow, the Abominant has failed to kill the tank. Okay, we will go to the Patriarch going into him. Okay, you can do the same thing again. Hmm? You can do the same I thing. I could, this is things. true. He will hit all of them. And then I'm looking for fives, but full rerolls. Really, I'm looking for a singular six. Okay. Not a good start. <laughs> Ooh! But the Patriarch does not. The tank gets to shoot on death. This could be huge. So I'm gonna split fire to victory because we all know that this works every single time, right? Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna put Demolisher Cannon and Heavy Stubber into the Acolytes? Acolytes, Acolytes. yes. I'm learning. I'm gonna put one Multi Melta into this. Guy that's wearing overalls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's hard at work. Yeah, I'm gonna put another multi melta into the six wound chimera, and then I'll put the last cannon into the two wound chimera. Okay. Let's see if we can do some work. 
Oh, he only kills four acolytes. All of the multi-melters have whiffed. She really needed to do some work on that shoot on death. Okay, guard, baby. <laughs> Okay, but I am losing four out of these. Yeah. So I had a little bit of luck on my side there. We'll go to the bikes into here. Oh. That will still just be two dead though, because they're weirdly AP2 still. And then we'll go to the Steelers. Oh, he, oh Lord, he did. Oh, <laughs> huge, huge turn for Alex. Once again, Gaunt's ghosts have left the table. He's got 16 bring it down points and four deploy teleport homers. He sits at 55 points to Tanya's 39 at the middle of turn four. Battleshock of the Deep Scion's mid table, the infantry have passed, and the lone solo Scion also passes. Attaboy! Five primary for Tanya to go up to 44 to Alex's 55. She's got overwhelming force and secure no man's land, both things she's fully capable of doing. Take aim on the Basilisk and the Lehman Russ, and duty and honor on the command squad to give them extra OC. Here comes Ursula Creed, and her infantry squad is getting duty and honor when they get out, as well as first rank, second rank fire. Oh, I see some dead cultists in Alex's future. The guard squad falls back from the Adeline Jackals. Here comes Lord Solar Leontis making his move. God's Ghost come back in to support her dwindling castle. Looks like the leaflet campaign is working. Here come more neophytes. Okay, shoot me All right. in the face. All right, this guy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's first. He's gonna shoot into here. So he's done. I'm gonna see, okay. it doesn't, he literally won't be able to do anything. He'll show up at the end of the game, basically. But oh, I'll see okay. if he comes back. Oh. <laughs> and the jackals will come back. Man, oh man, nothing dying. Okay, so next, I'm actually gonna do this chimera here mm -hmm. into the gene stealers, because that's bet. all I can do. Yep. First three. Yep. So we've got chimera into the gene stealer manages to kill four of them. Do as much shooting as we can. The guardsmen kill a bike, more guardsmen kill down to the quad in that squad. Multi meltas. Okay. Smallish cannon. Mm -hmm. I guess Laz cannon and heavy stubbers. Okay. Okay. Both fail. Feel no pains. Both fail. Ooh. Uh -oh. The aberrant down to two wounds. Yeah. In the box. Demolisher shots being rerolled. Tanya to one command point, but the Patriarch is patient. <laughs> I failed all of them. I want to know the damage, please. 10, 15, 16 damage. 16 damage! <laughs> He's just a smear. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll do Gaunt's Ghosts then. Yeah, let's go into there. With AP, three at minus one. So Gaunt's Ghosts so now wipe those Acolytes, and finally, <laughs> Alex fails to have them come back. <laughs> it's too late to matter. So all of the shooting from Lord Solar and the Command Squad will go into this you big bet. boy here. Mm -hmm. Do I get stats? That is five on Overwhelming Force. Science on the top table miss. Basilisk takes out that Rebel Chimera. I want to start off with this Cyclops demolition vehicle. Oh, the Cyclops blows up real good, takes the Jackal Quad down to a single wound. That will secure No Man's Land for another five secondary. Leontis into the Chimera. He's in. Herbert has decided that he wants to clear these neophytes all by himself. So he's going to charge in and see what he can do. The bravest Scion in the land, Herbert the Scion charges the neophytes. Herbert the Scion doesn't hurt the Neophytes, but he sure is brave. Okay, so then we're gonna go with Lord Solars. Mm, nice. He'll be good. Okay, and then the Horsey. Oh, yeah. Hitting on force. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> I need sixes. No. Leontis fails to down the Chimera, but that objective is now hers. I have one more charge. Oh yeah, over absolutely. Here. Mm -hmm. Last of a squad. Did they come back? No! <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> if I rolled like this at Worlds, I would have won the whole thing. <laughs> this is absurd. Big neophytes into the silence. Yep. Kill him dead. No. And 
Three wounds. Get out of here. AP? No. Looking for force. Oh. If he survives, those neophytes are not going to be deploying teleport homers. They are going to have to fall back and they can't go back to the shadows because I can't deal with it anymore. I can't. They gotta stay on the table. 50-50 on a command reroll here and it would be clutch if he lives. Atta boy, Herbert! Really good play to keep that guy alive. Alex spending his command point on Return to the Shadows. The 10 and 20 men are both coming back next turn in addition to his two units of Adeline Jackals. What a massive turn. Two points on Bring It Down for Alex that turn to take him to 57 for the dead Cyclops demolition vehicle. But Tanya scored both of her secondaries to take her up to 54 points. Alex does have that burned objective, which really means that I'm down by eight points. So I'm going to have to just try and scrounge out points wherever I can in turn five and see if I can make up the difference. Ten points on Prime for Alex jumps him out to 67 to 54 for Tanya. Alex rules Battleshock and those neophytes are afraid of Herbert. Neophytes desperate escape and lose two of them as Herbert cuts them down. That's my man. The Basilisk is the softest tank that she has for me to get points. And there's at this point, we've got enough space on the board. There's no way that deploy teleport homers is being stopped. Alex protecting his home objective here as much as possible. If he doesn't, and Tanya draws capture enemy outposts, it could actually cost him the game. Spending a command point on tunnel crawlers to appear within three inches, he's down to one. But if this goes well, I think he's gonna end the game with it. So that Neophyte unit to... is gonna deploy teleport homers. Okay. And then we're gonna go shooting phase. Okay. We will go with the Ridge Runner. Mm -hmm. He's going to shoot the Mortar there at the Basilisk <sighs> and the Stubbers into Herbert. Not Herbert! He's made me angry for the last time. Stubbers into Herbert and I will wound three times. Okay. Minus one? Mm -hmm. No, no AP. Oh, force. No, oh, you got that'll him. That'll get him. Yay! You got him, If you pull poor. investigate signals, I'm going to feel real happy that that poor happened. Herbert. And then the Mortar is going to go into the Basilisk for six shots, and then we have wounded two times. Three. Good. No damage. But he is targeted. Last command point for extra AP and ballistic seal to try and max out and bring it down by killing that basilisk with perfect ambush. Boom! Got him. Okay, that's that's it. All right, Lord Solar into the Chimera. You two. Bet. Oh, Leontis downs the Chimera! At this point, I believe I have it wrapped up unless she really pulls the nuts on the cards. Alex has got 38 secondary, 35 primary. Tanya sits at 54. Can she get him? As always, the Valiant Guard are going to always look for opportunities and not focus on an insurmountable obstacle in front of them. Insane Bravery Unload Solar's unit try to score that Storm Hostile objective. Good call. She's also got no prisoners. Alex's turn was pretty good. I do still feel like I have a chance because he only got five on primary. She can make this really close, folks. She needs three kills and a steal an objective. Can she do it? So shooting phase, really the only thing that matters is this shooting here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put two flamers yep. into your gene stealer there. Yeah. Two, three. Saves. One bad. Let's see if those uh, the last, gun last guns can <laughs> yeah. do some work again. Fives. Gene stealers have lost a bit. Demolisher pounds that guard squad in the deep. No, ghosts. None of that nonsense. So. Gauntlet's ghost, kill a squad, and the character, can it die? I mean, you've got the sniper rifle for the character. Come on, Larkin. Hits. Okay. Wounds. Well, yeah. No! Get out! Yeah! Get out! I actually think that might be it for your no prisoners tally. Well, I still have a gun here. Yep. To go here. You bet. One wound, two wounds. So that's a second kill for uh, no prisoners. It's only two dead units! I don't have any more shooting! I gotta make charges. Okay, go for it. So I'm gonna start here because this one's really important. Yep, moving into the charge phase. Leontis out objective controls the Achilles Ridge Runner, so that is actually a storm hostile. And then I guess I'm gonna charge the guards mid into yeah, so the you can get the kill. I don't gonna... have in, any interrupts, so. I'm gonna start here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You bet. <sighs> Never mind. They're T3. Downing the G Sealers would get that extra no prisoners point, but no! And then Thor. Okay, Lord Solar. See if you can get a no prisoners over there. Technically, you only have two kills so far. 
not like that. <laughs> not like that, I won't. I do, do I make any saves? I make two saves okay. anyway. Okay. So that'll prevent your no prisoners. Yeah. Tanya still gets nine points on secondaries, but she maxes out at 40. Alex sits at 78 because he's got that extra five in hand. We add paint scores and our final folks, 88 to 80 in favor of your winner, Alex McDougal. What an amazingly well fought game right down to the wire and literally nothing wanted to die. That was an absolute slaughter fest and a lot of fun to watch. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Tanya, for an absolutely fantastic game. That had me on the edge of my seat the entire time, and I hope it had you there, too. Thanks again to RW for sponsoring this episode. Make sure to check them out at the link in the description below. They just may be able to help you realize the army of your dreams. Make sure to tune in to future shows and see what else RW has coming for us. As always, a big, big thank you to you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share. If you really like what we do, please consider supporting us through YouTube membership or Patreon. You'll get exclusive releases as well as our behind-the-scenes interviews, early access to most of our shows, and access to our Discord, the most happening 40k community around. Well, that's it for all of us here at the Play On Studios, folks. I've been JT The Voice, and on behalf of all of us, until the next time you see us in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe, play on! I do work with TheArtOfWar40k.com. Check us out. The coaching services are great. All the coaches are very close friends of mine. If you want to get better at the game, I always think it's amazing to seek out people who are better at the skills that you want to achieve. You really can't get a better coaching service. It's fantastic.